Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom. Welcome back and welcome to the first of my transfer roundups um, for this summer. I'm going to try and focus on deals that have been done, give my opinions and I'll do a little bit of my own um, rumour hearsay but it won't be focused on um, all those god-awful irritating Twitter accounts that just make up transfer rumours just to get some traction online. We'll try and stick to the facts here. Um, and one fact we've got to really, really um, figure out this summer for the first time. Um, so the deadline has changed now. It's no longer the end of August. The deadline for championship clubs for all incoming permanent and loan registrations closes 5pm on the Thursday prior to the commencement of the Premier League. The Premier League starts on Friday the 9th of August. That gives championship clubs up until the 8th of August. So we do still have a slight overlap as in um, the championship kit. I think it's the 2nd of August, isn't it? Um, the Luton Borough game. So there will be one round of matches where potentially um, clubs will lose players. But 45 to go after that. So, <coughs> excuse me, the complaints kind of valid complaints that we've had in the past um, that teams start, they get things set up and then they get an offer they can't refuse and everything goes up in the air, don't have time to react and basically all their plans are done with no way of replacing them by second week of September or what have you. Um, people seem to know the landscape of their entire season by then. So let's look at what people have done so far. Now, this is obviously going to hot up... Um, as we get closer to the start of August. So what we're seeing to begin with, obviously, I'm not going to talk about every single release that clubs have made because there's plenty of those players that have gone and kicking about. Um, I'm going to talk about the deals that have been done. And the domino effect has not yet started, but um, we think that the first um, cascade effect transfer has already happened at Bristol City. Um, so the money's there ready to start moving around, but we know what it's like. One is the butterfly effect, isn't it? One transfer has to go to then push another to another to another, and money has to start moving about within the division, and it hasn't quite yet. So let's start. We'll go in alphabetical order here. So Barnsley so far. Brad Collins, goalkeeper, released by Chelsea. He's come in there. If Chelsea youth players are anything to go by, then... Um, you know, always worth having. Um, Mads Yule Anderson, a centre-half from AC Hursons. Um, undisclosed fee. We know Barnsley have got possible money ball ownership links, data, statistics. Whoop-de-whoop. Let's see how Mr. Anderson goes. But um, so a couple in there. Zeke Friars leaves Barnsley left back to go out to Swindon. Um, Birmingham is an interesting one because... We think this might have been something that um, pissed Gary Monk off before he left. Um, so the big one here is that Hotter went out to Villa and the fee is undisclosed, but we think it was about two million plus Gary Gardner. And we also think that Mr. Hotter was making um, the thick end of 40 grand a week. So this was more of a cost cutting exercise by Birmingham's Trillion Group ownership. Um, so Gardner in and Hotter out. Hotter, um, great player, really, really good player. But Monk had stopped using him, hadn't fit in there. Um, we don't know if Mr Pep, the new manager in there, would have wanted him. Well, he doesn't get the choice anymore. He's got Gary Gardner, who is a sturdy championship centre midfielder. So you go from um, kind of, I don't know, a glass of Prosecco to a cup of tea, really, from Hotter to... Gary Gardner, but um, also Birmingham out, Greg Stewart to Rangers on a free, uh, Berylly Lubala to Crawley, that one is undisclosed. So, um, see, there's a lot of clubs will just make these squads compact, anyone they think it doesn't have a future there. Um, out they go. Blackburn, I like this one. Stuart Downing in to Blackburn. Uh, Tony Mowbray managed him when he was at Borough. Downing, great servant for Borough, um, England player, Liverpool player, Aston Villa, absolute ton of experience. Um, depending on the deal they've done wages-wise and how it's 
ratcheted. That could be a really good signing because um, I always feel you need there needs to be a player at your club that's. Well, I mean, there's always by definition a player that's been at the highest level and done the most, and they can pass stuff on and bring it down and in there. Um, I'm sure it'll make quite a lot of appearances actually. Um, Blackburn four one four one lit or four four one one lit rather um, a lot last year. So. I don't know whether Downing goes in that 10 position where Dak's been so good or maybe sits out wide, but it'll give Mowbray um, an opportunity to do um, other stuff, maybe in a 4-2-3-1. We'll see how he uses him, but um, that type of player into a, what was a mid-table championship club um, looks like good work to me if they're not paying him a small fortune in wages, which I'm sure they would have been sensible about with Mowbray and charge. So I like that one. Uh, Brentford in Christian Norgard from Fiorentina, 3.6 million. And we know that Brentford do this every year. In comes someone who's been beautifully scouted by their amazing Scandinavian analytics people and and normally gets sold on for a boatload of cash later on. So we'll see how this guy does. Um, they did release uh, McLeod and McEachern, so there is spots there. Um, in that deep line um, midfield position. I know it went to 3-4-3 at the end of last season, so less 4-2-3-1 double pivot type thing. But um, I'm sure if that figure's correct, all my figures from Transfer Marked, um, by the way, the German website, which is normally pretty reliable, um, if that figure's correct, then he is playing, believe you me. Um, Bristol City. So this is the one that I cited as the possible cascade domino transfer is Lloyd Kelly. It was done quite quickly. Um, Lloyd Kelly, the young English fullback, typical Bournemouth signing, really. 13.32 million transfer marks um, reports. So that could be the one that starts the dominoes because, um, well, Bristol City run quite a tight ship. Steve Lansdowne puts money in, but they've sold well recently. Bobby Reed's an example. Aidan Flint last season and then regenerated the squad. The interesting thing with Bristol City is we need to figure out what's going to happen with Adam Webster because um, that would very much change Lee Johnson's thinking as to who's coming in um, if both of those are gone. Um, so I think Bristol City is the one where the cascade starts, to be honest. Unless one of the parachute teams goes first, we'll see. But money in the coffers there, certainly for Bristol City, to spend. Mo Ice has also gone to Peterborough. Uh, Dara McAntony tweeting and that was seven figures. So there's another million in the pot there. Stefan Marinovic, the Aussie goalie, has gone back to Wellington. Out he goes. Um, Charlton. Patrick Bauer out to Preston. The most Preston sign. We'll talk about that when we get to Preston. Um, but a bit of a disappointing one for Charlton. Um in the respect of he was their captain, he scored the winning goal at Wembley. So that one will need uh, replacing, and that's a championship club selling to a championship club as well. So um, we'll see what Charlton and Boya does. I mean, you know the ownership stuff's going to um, cause havoc with, with that down there at Charlton. We're pretty sure Mr. Aribo is going to be leaving Charlton fairly soon too as well. That might give them some uh, money to get a decent championship level, maybe an experienced one, centre-half in to replace Bauer. Um, Cardiff, not much yet. Um, Stuart O'Keefe's gone to Gillingham on a free. This is one where I expect big movers. I, I We know what Neil Warnock's like. Um, he always gives his team the best chance and he always buys goal scorers as well. He often has just a litany of attacking players. Um, one of those kind of managers where it functions half a team defending and he just lets the four guys, I guess, you know, up top, whatever system is playing, kind of get on with it. Obviously, there's good players there already. Um, the likes of Bobby Reed and Junior Hoy that have done it in this division before. Um, I'm expecting 45 million in on parachutes as well. Um, I'm expecting a large wad of money dropped on somebody that we know all about and that um, knows the championship. Well, Scott Hogan type player. Um, so we'll wait and see on Cardiff. Derby, um, Graham Shinney in from Aberdeen. That one's been a long time coming. Looks like a bit of a link up with Derby and Aberdeen because Max Lowe was there on loan. And 
Craig Bryson, after eight years, has left to much fanfare on social media. He's gone back up to Scotland, excuse me. Um, Aberdeen's becoming quite a good proving ground for championship players, with Norwich using Aberdeen well, loaning Madison there and taking McLean from there. Um, both those players will be in the Premier League next season, so um, definitely a kind of good link-up place for championship teams. Um, Fulham, parachute team, Scott Parker, new manager, nothing in there as yet. We'll probably expect some outs there after all that splurge of cash. And the setting you on to Spurs thing just never, ever goes away, does it? Um, so, yeah, we'll see if that rears its head. Remember, Daniel Levy likes to make teams sweat until the last minute. Huddersfield have been um, quite mobile so far. This is our third new parachute team, our third £45 million parachute team. Um, Tommy Elphick in from Aston Villa on a free. Um, that's what I'd call a Steve Bruce type signing, isn't it? Um, where it's he knows the league. He's played for three or four different championship clubs. He, within the, I'm sure I've seen him at Reading, Hull and Villa in just the last probably 14 months or so, Elphick. So um, he goes straight in, knows exactly what he's doing in this league. Uh, Reese Brown has come in from Forest Green. I think his contract was up, but because of his age, they paid compensation. Josh Caroma from Leighton Orient. That's undisclosed. So kind of interesting signings because he's gone for one proven championship and two very unproven. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Out goes Jonas Lossel to Everton on a free. Chris Lerver to Dresden undisclosed. Hull. Obviously, Grant McCann only came in on Friday, so nothing doing at Hull yet. And we're going to say it every time we do a transfer update. Jared Bowen, blah de blah Kamal Grzycki, blah de blah We don't expect either of them to be there on August the 9th when the Premier League kicks off and the window has closed. Um, Leeds, this is going to be an interesting one. I saw a good thread on Twitter today saying that Leeds basically have got... Um, if they really gamble this year, they're 21 million around off FFP, 39 million across the three years. Um, so they could gamble that, could gamble more because the figures won't come out. And if they're in the Premier League, um, they'll be outside EFL sanctions. But um, certainly Leeds, a team who are going to want to challenge, who have high commercial incomes, but don't have parachute money. So very difficult for them to compete with Cardiff, um, Fulham and Huddersfield, who have all got that £45 million come in um, this season. Um, Caleb Ekuban has gone to Trebs and Spore for uh, just shy of a million. I think he might have been there already on loan, so um, I guess that one was guaranteed. Um, last couple of years, Leeds have um, worked the transfer market well. Um, Chris Wood funding other sign-ins and Rolando Vieira... Um, Last year, so both those players going out, um, you'd think they'd want to hold on to people like Jack Clark and Calvin Phillips. So Pontus Janssen may be the one to go out and raise the money. He's probably either parachute team ready. Neil Warnock would love Janssen, wouldn't he? If Leeds would ever sell to Cardiff, and Cardiff would be able to pay an eight million quid transfer fee or you know whatever championship money it's likely to be. So mm, I'm just throwing two and two together and making eight million basically there but um you'd expect someone to go out from Leeds unless all this Arab money comes in but still FFP unless they do some weird um skullduggery maybe sell a stadium back to themselves or what have you um but we expect um something to happen at Leeds and we expect Bielsa to be backed in some way shape or form Luton um welcome Luton into the division uh Callum McManaman from Wigan on a free, I quite like that. That's a that's a good sign, and that's an experienced player on a free there. Um, that's all we've got from Luton so far. So we'll see um, how that progresses. Obviously, don't mess with a team that scored a hell of a lot of points last season in League One. Uh, Borough, well, we've spoken about Downing um, going. Well, he's released, and then he's ended up at Blackburn. But that kind of comes into the Borough narrative. Millwall, we're expecting Bialkowski. Uh, to come in from Ipswich. Obviously, I've got a lot of Ipswich and a lot of Millwall followers. So when that confirms, possibly on Monday, we'll do a separate video on that. Just waiting to see what the fee's going to be, although it probably end up being undisclosed, knowing it's Ipswich. Um, Alex Pierce 
is in from Derby. He was already there on loan. Don't know if his mate Jake Cooper will still be there. We'll see. Um, some people say Cooper is Millwall's most saleable asset. Others say his amazing assists and goals record um, masks, you know, just a normal championship defender. So we shall see. That could be another Cardiff one, couldn't it? Hey, um, it'd be perfect for them. Um, Steve Morrison, Millwall legend, really. He's gone out on loan to Shrewsbury, so it'd be weird seeing Millwall playing without Steve Morrison next year. Um, Forrest, love this. Sudani out to Olympiakos on an undisclosed fee. So we all know Mr. Marianakis owns Forrest and has, let's say, some links out there. If you did want to make your books look good, you could easily sell one player from one of your clubs to another of your clubs, keep the fee undisclosed, feed some money in there. Don't know whether the EFL would want to look at that, but mm, I'll say no more on here. Um, Taxidis, another Greek... Um, well, Sudani's not a Greek player. Is, is Saudi? Saudi? Is he Sudani? Can't think. Um, I, I, I don't know where Sudani's from. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Um, Taxidis, he's gone to Lecce, 450 grand. So Forrest moving some assets out before they move. Big spend from them last year. Remember, FFP works over three years, so we'll see uh, what goes on there and how Mr. Marianakis works out. Preston, we've spoken about the most. Um, Preston signing Patrick Bauer. That's a good one. Good value, uh, mid-20s, centre-half. I think he'll be a first-teamer as well for them, or at least in and around challenging strength that first-team squad. Um Good signing, typical typical Preston working the lower division markets, not overspending and then selling on. We wonder whether Callum Robinson will um, still be there by the end of the window. QPR, a um, couple of left backs, two left backs. If I was Jake Bidwell, I'd be wondering what was going on. Um, Lee Wallace in from Rangers. Mark Werberton had him before at Rangers, I would guess. Um, haven't, haven't fact haven't fact checked that, so could be wrong. Could have they could have. Ships passed in the night. Johan Barbe um, from another of Warburton's former clubs, Brentford. That's a good sign. And he's not a great age, Barbe. He can play centre half, he can play left back. Um, culture player, obviously, worked the championship a lot. Takes a mean free kick as well. Um, Surprised Brentford don't need him, or need him around at least. Um, that's a thumbs up for me on a free Barbe to QPR. I like that one. Um, Swansea did a separate video on this one. Dan James to Manchester United, 15.3 million. We know Swansea are on year two parachute payments, but we also have an idea that they have a big shortfall to kind of close up here. 20, 30 million. I don't know. I've heard different figures that they need to sell, sell, sell before anything happens there. <clears throat> but good assets there. Um, interested to see how Steve Cooper goes as well, the new manager. So keep your eye on Swansea. Maybe a couple of players come in, but possibly one or other. Leroy Fair, maybe Jeff Montero. Um, don't know what's happening there with those ex-Premier League players. Um, let me know if you Swans fan know more than me. Right, a couple more teams here. Sheffield Wednesday. Julian Borner in from Armenia, Byfield on a free. Daniel Pudel, who we've seen a fair amount in the um, championship, out to Milada Boleslav on a free as well. And we've already mentioned Callum McManaman for Wigan. So that's about the size of it yet. Um, there's going to be a way to go. We know that Bristol City might have some money burning a hole in their pocket. And we know that the three parachute teams might also have money burning a hole in their pocket. And we know that um, Neil Warnock always gets his chairman to spend. So Bristol City, Cardiff, expect some action in there, expecting some action out of Fulham possibly, and then a spend there. We're just waiting for the, like I say, the cascade, the domino effect transfers to start happening. But that's the size of it now. Um, you see the you see the teams that are not going to spend kind of already starting the likes of Preston bringing in Bauer. You might expect one or two more, and they'll be done and away they go again for next season. But um, this is going to go all the way up to the ninth um, of August, and where I will promise you now I'll do a final roundup where we'll go through everything and decide who's had the best window. Let me know what you think. Let me know who you think's going where, who you think's going to spend, who you think's going to sell, and. Um, how this is all going to pan out. Thank you 
for watching. Um, planning to do one of these, I don't know, every couple of weeks or so as the transfers drip through. Um, let me know how often you want them and what you'd like to see me talk about. In these transfer roundups, there should be three or four by the time we get through to August the 10th. Anyway, I've gone 20 minutes, so I will say thank you for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, regular notifications. I'm sure I've said this right the way through the close season. There'll be some content soon, and every time we have a firing, an appointment, there's Bielkowski to talk about soon. There's maybe something at Derby and Chelsea happening soon. Um, so I'm sure I'll be back with some content very, very soon. And then the friendlies will be underway, middle of July, and off we go. Thanks for watching. See you very soon. Over and out.